In today's episode of Bike Bike Nudge Nudge, I'm going to share my experience of getting groceries in my buck feeds. It's a bit of a mundane chore, and you may have already seen other cargo bike YouTube videos where buying groceries is shown. For me, the route I use to bike for groceries is the same as if I were to drive, so there's no difference to compare. Therefore, instead of sharing my biking experience sequentially, I'm going to group what I would like to say in three subject areas, service roads, parking, and trip chaining. Let's start with service roads. Service roads, otherwise known as frontage roads, access roads, feeder roads, or parallel roads, are meant to be low speed roads that run parallel to a major road and allow access to stores. In a commercial area, they're an attempt to separate a strode back into a street and a road. But in the examples I could find, they appear to not be walkable, so the strode has actually only been divided into a strode and a road. I took a brief look on the internet to see if I could find other cities that build service roads in residential areas, but I didn't have any luck. Please leave me a comment if you have what I'm about to describe in your city, or if it's a unique failure of planning just in my city. If you're not familiar with service roads in residential areas, it's what I'm riding along right now, and it's a definite sign that your city was only planning for cars at the time the residential area was built. In my city, these residential service roads are built along arterial roads where the streets are laid out in a grid pattern. These developments were built in the 1950s and 60s in my city. In later cul-de-sac hell developments, the houses on the outside of the neighborhood turn their backs on the arterial road and the service road is unnecessary to access the front of the house. The benefit of the service road is to allow the city to keep a high-speed road very close to the front of houses. The service road also provides a public space for the storage of private items. That is to say, you can park your car in front of your house. You can see from the sign I saw on my route that people who have free parking only because of a service road are loath to give it up. The negative impacts of service roads are all borne by people walking and biking. As you can see in this image, the road is about 22 meters wide. The island is solely there to accommodate a left turn lane at intersections. When the service roads are added to each side, the width of the road is now 41 meters, nearly double the crossing distance for people outside of cars. City planners also like to put biking infrastructure on service roads since it allows them not to have to take away driving lanes from an Ontario road. However, there are two issues I found with letting service roads be your biking infrastructure. The first is that service roads tend to not be continuous. I'm only showing one example of service roads in my area, but I have the same experience on most service roads in my city. You can see here that I'm taking the sidewalk as the service road abruptly ends, but I then rejoin the road due to the upcoming slip lane. I'll leave my rant about slip lanes for a future video. The lack of continuity and not being on the proper side of the road can put you in places where drivers don't expect you. This woman obviously didn't see me sitting, waiting to cross in the crosswalk for 30 seconds before turning left right in front of me. If your city just tells you to ride on the service road, you'll either have to keep joining and leaving the artillery road, or you'll have to ride on the sidewalk. The second issue is that people on bikes are encountered before cars for drivers wanting to turn onto the artillery road. Because people on bikes are still relatively uncommon in North America, drivers will drive through the service road and stop at the arterial road. The drivers are typically not looking for and not expecting to see a person on a bike. Traffic engineers will put up a stop sign for the person on a bike. Stop signs are not actually meant for people on bikes, are a rather big disincentive for choosing to ride a bike, are a bigger disincentive for someone on a cargo bike, and reduce safety for all people on bikes, and are generally an indication of poor traffic design. Just like wide sidewalks, service roads are not proper biking infrastructure. Please leave a comment if your city also tells you just to bike on the service road instead of building proper infrastructure, or if I've just wasted a few minutes of your time with a problem unique to my city. Next, I'm going to talk about parking. If you're a big nerd about cities and want to know a lot about the cost of parking, Donald Choup's The High Cost of Free Parking is the book to read, but you have to really want to learn about parking. There are enough interviews with Donald Choup on the interwebs for you to learn enough. The thing I want to mention about parking in this video is that I'm an idiot for riding a bike anywhere that offers free parking. The only thing free about this parking lot is that drivers are not paying to rent a small part of it while they're inside the store. The store pays to maintain the parking lot and it also pays taxes on the entire area. Due to parking minimums that set requirements based on the near absolute peak busiest times the store is open, there is always lots of empty parking stalls. An abundance of empty stalls is wasted space and money. And, since everyone who shops at the store pays a little more for the store to have such a large parking lot, anyone who doesn't drive is subsidizing everyone who does drive. The second problem with having such a large area for free parking is it encourages people to drive. So your city has to build strodes like these. And these strodes discourage anyone from walking or biking. So your city then doesn't build infrastructure for walking or biking, and then more people drive. Repeat ad nauseum. As you can see in this image, about 40% of this block is buildings and the rest is parking. To get cars to this block and other blocks in the area, the city has to build four-lane, one-way roads surrounding this block on three sides. 
To make matters slightly worse, to accommodate people driving, the city left out crosswalks on one edge at three of the four intersections around this block. But, as they say, if you build your city for cars, people will drive cars. The last thing I would like to talk about in this video, and finally something that really applies to people who are interested in doing more with cargo bikes, is trip chaining. Trip chaining is simply making two or more stops during one trip. In my case for this grocery trip, I did most of my shopping at a large supermarket, but there's especially fruits and vegetable store along the way. Trip chaining is a barrier to me using my back feet more. Unlike a car, I'm not able to securely lock the box of my back feet. I'm just not that trusting that I can leave a bunch of snacks in plain view and they would all still be there when I got back. A solid cover might help, but I haven't yet heard of a lockable cover for my back feet. Please leave a comment if you know something I should try, and I might make a video in the future about your suggestions. On this trip, my wife went in alone to buy the fruits and vegetables while I waited in the nice weather outside. However, not all my snacks got home safely. So that's my normal experience when I go to get groceries in my back feet. The infrastructure could be nicer, but my route is mostly low stress. There's too much parking, and I'm giving a little money to everyone who drives to the supermarket. Making a second stop is a little nudge to drive instead, but it's not that bad to get first choice of all the snacks I just bought. A Bockfeets isn't necessary for grocery shopping, but it helps a North American like me who owns a big refrigerator and buys more groceries but makes fewer trips than people do in Asia or Europe. One other advantage of my Bockfeets that I want to quickly mention is that I get my groceries really close to my back door. I hope you found this video interesting or entertaining and will consider giving it a like or will consider subscribing to the channel. I hope it inspires you to ask your city for proper biking infrastructure so you can do more by bike. And please let me know if you have good ideas on how to secure my snacks.